Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out today. So for today, I'm going to be your KTR car guy. We're here every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. If you've got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, summer travel. I've got more and more people coming into my shop and say, hey, I'm leaving town tomorrow. Can you check out my transmission? Not a real good thing. We've got open phones. We're talking about whatever you want to talk about on the phone. If you've got questions, give us a call. And brake jobs, what to expect. So I brought in a couple of ASC certified technicians to help me help you with your car. I've got Joel Bartko with Arizona Imports in Tempe. How's it going, Joel? Great, Dave. Glad to be here. And I've got Frank Lloyds with Desert Car Care Service with a couple locations in the East Valley, so the Chandler-Gilbert area. Frank, glad you're here. Guten Morgen. Thanks for having us here. Frank is the personality of Bumper to Bumper Radio. Boy, he is, he's got a big personality. So anyway... Uh, yeah, brake jobs, what to expect. I, I hear advertisements on the radio all the time for a $99 brake job in a lifetime warranty, and I think the words they use is pro rata. I'm not really sure what pro rata is, but a uh, $99, $99 brake job. Is that practical, Joel? No, Dave, I don't think it is. It's more like the $5 haircut. You're going to get what you pay for. <laughs> what, what about you, Frank? Or the free egg roll with some low mane. He's there's no, you know, there's nothing. I mean, as consumers, we really have to be cautious about these loss leaders, these uh, lifetime affairs. Well, I spent That's... I spent uh, probably 20 minutes before the show just calling around, you know, on some different coupons, some different advertisements that I saw, and this is the the thing that I don't think you, as the consumer, maybe necessarily realize is that I just take a sample 2005 Toyota Camry. I, as a shop, can wholesale buy a pair of brake pads for $20, front brake pads. I can buy the same set of brake pads, well, not the same set of brake pads, but a better quality brake pad for $95. Same car, same make, same model. What's the difference? I deal with that every day, Dave, and I I look on my screen to pick which set of brakes I want to put in the customer's cars, and I want to put in something that usually is like the OE put in. And like you said, I can see them for $8 and for $120. I want to use the right stuff. I want to put the stuff in that's going to last, be quiet, and not fade out a good quality brake job. So if a good set of brake pads costs you at a wholesale rate $90, is that, I mean, reasonable for a for a later model car? Does that sound like a f- fair price for a good set of brake pads? I would think that's a little high. A little high? Yeah. But I would say it depends on the car. If you've got a Chevy truck where the pads are much bigger or an imported car like a, a BMW, yeah, you're going to be around $100 on just the pads alone. If it's a Toyota Camry, a set of Toyota Camry pads, a good quality pads, probably about $65, $70. No, but that's what you're paying for at wholesale. That's more like I'd be selling them at. More like you'd be selling them at. You, you know, I think, I think the biggest question uh, that we really we need to ask as, as consumers is, how do I make that phone call about what I perceive is needing breaks? Is it how much for a brake job, or can it be how much is it going to cost to find out what I need? This is a big problem in our industry, um, and there is this perception with this massive advertisement campaign amongst uh, you know, some of the national chains. And what happens is the consumers, they're trained on a fixed price. So as, a, as shop owners, our biggest fear is A, we don't know what one needs. We haven't looked at the car. And B, giving that price on what we don't know. So what I'm really suggesting that all consumers stay in tune to is when you call, not just for brakes, but anything else, how much does it cost to find out what is wrong with my car? That's key. So I see a lot of free brake checks. Go ahead, Joel. And what Frank was saying, I agree with. And when a customer calls up and says, I need a brake job, how much is it? What's your brake job? Apples to apples. We're going to do a brake job. We're going to resurface the rotors or the rotors need to be replaced. Are we going to flush the brake system? Are we going to bleed the brakes? Do you need brake hoses? Do you need caliber slides? Without seeing that car, 
there's nobody that can give you a really honest opinion of what you need. Do you need brakes because they're making noise? Are they pulsating? Are they grinding? There's so many different positions. Well, like I said be before in. the show, I made phone calls at different, you know, different chains. I went off their coupons, and I, I got to be honest. I'm in the business. I was confused. Has hardware? Doesn't have hardware? Has calipers? Doesn't have calipers? Well, those are composite rotors. We can't cut composite rotors. I was so turned around. I'm thinking, man, if I was a consumer, a I wouldn't know what to ask, you know. And I got to play dumb when I call these shops because I, you know, I don't want them to know that I'm the guy from the radio <laughs> calling to see what a brake job goes for at their shop. But realistically, we all are driven by the same economic engine, are we not? We all have this similar bills and similar pay for good, for quality help, all that stuff. So can one guy be dramatically cheaper than the next? It, a lot of them are lost leaders where they're just trying to bring you in the door to get you in the door. And then once you're there, the real price comes out or the price of the quality that you're going to get, what you're getting for your money is going to be way different than what you advertised at. Now, wait a minute. Time out. I'm, I'm the consumer. I get what you're saying, but damn it, I need peace of mind. The worst thing that I can do is call a repair shop and not have an inkling about what I'm getting ready to entertain as far as my wallet. So what needs to be done, as, as Joel says, and, and, and as we're talking about, a good shop, they're not going to give you some sort of false sense of hope. Most mm. shop owners, technicians, service advisors, they really want to give you peace of mind. And so bring it in, let bring us it check in. it out. You go to a doctor. If I come to Desert Car Care <laughs> Service in yeah. the same, in Gilbert, I say, hey, I think I need brakes in my car. I'm really not sure, but I know you guys have been around a long time. You guys are good. What is it going to take for me to come in and get the brakes checked out? Is that how I should approach you as the shop owner? Go ahead. A well, absolutely. And so what, what we're looking for, and, and, and most of us uh, on the Bumper to Bumper radio network, you know, we're, we're all here to do the right thing, is we want to hear your symptoms. That's what we want to hear, you know. Um, and, and so most people think, okay, I'm going to press brake pedal. I hear a squeak. I need brakes. We want to hear, I press brake pedal. I hear a squeak. What do I need? I press brake pedal. I've got pulsation, as, uh, as Joel was talking about earlier. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give the shops symptoms. Because the end result and the outcome of your service experience is going to be awesome if you start off with your symptoms. Symptoms. Go ahead, Joel. You know, Dave, you asked me a question earlier about the average price of a brake job. And I said on a Toyota Camry, I'd be guessing about 225 to do front pads and resurface the rotors. If you asked me on a BMW 335i on a front brake, I'd say about $400. Labor's exactly the same. It's all the differences in the parts there because on the European cars, we're always forced to replace the rotors. They're not resurfaceable. Or in the Japanese and the American domestic cars, we can usually resurface them with our machines. So there's a wide range there on prices. Well, as a consumer, I need to know when I'm being sold something. Because some people, you know, obviously they want to get, you know, they, they want a good, profitable experience with a customer because they got to keep the lights on and pay the employees and do all that stuff. So, you know, how do we decide as a consumer what's smoke and mirrors and BS and sparkle dust and something I don't need? And one thing that I think is a question in people's mind, do I need a brake fluid flush? And uh, flush is maybe not the right word because I know the BAR in California is, is, is attacking that word. But I know in the European cars, they say change the brake fluid every two years. That's the recommendation. What do you find, Joel? Well, the brake fluid is a very important part of the system. It collects moisture. If you get moisture in there, it lowers the boiling point. You'll, get, you'll lose your brakes when they get real hot. Brake fluid, I call it a brake fluid flush. You can call it a brake fluid service. It's six one half dozen the other. You're replacing the brake fluid through the master cylinder, the ABS unit, all the calibers and lines. You want to get that flushed out. I recommend that every two years are close to 30,000 miles. Plus, we measure. We have a stick we can put in the fluid that measures the moisture and the, the way the fluid looks and everything else in there. Well, I like that because that's objective. That's not just saying you just need a brake fluid flush, but someone's actually put some science and there's empirical data to say, yeah, your brake fluid is full of you know copper content and a lot of moisture, and it's time to change it out. You know, I think as consumers, what we really need to do is um, think of this whole car repair mess is like going to your dentist. Do we want cavities? No, of course not. Now, we can give our fluid systems according to the owner's manual, as, as Joel very much said so, because you've got to be cautious on overdoing it. We don't want to over flush our systems. But think of it as going to a dentist, a teeth cleaning, right? Your fluid flushing is all part of that. So the question is when... How much? How often? Why? These are things. And so, as, as, as Joel said, you know, uh, you definitely want to revert back to what the manufacturer states. You know, what are the engineers saying? 
how often I should do these flushes. Well, when we come back, we've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. If you've got any questions in regard to your car, I've got the guys here to give you a hand. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out, so I brought some helpers in. I've got Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialist, who is in Tempe. And I've got Frank Lloyds from Desert Car Care Service, who's got a couple locations serving in the East Valley, Chandler and Gilbert area. And, uh, Joel, I appreciate you coming down. Well, I got you here. Tell us a little bit about your shop, how long you've been there. Well, Dave, we've been in Tempe there about the last 13, 14 years, but Arizona Imports has been in business for over the last 28 years. Um, we're servicing all kinds of vehicles, specializing in European and, domest- European and Asian cars, but we do all kinds of cars. I think we do a real good job, try our best every day to take care of people. Well, it's amazing. Every time I run into somebody who's a friend of mine, I ask them where they get their car service. It's the first question I ask everybody, and more people than not say, oh, yeah, I go down and see a guy named Joel at Arizona Imports. So all my friends already go there. i got no one to send there. So anyway, we've got open phones at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And up for this segment, we are going to go with James in Phoenix on a 2004 Mercury van. Go ahead, James. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, thanks, Dave. Good morning. Um, yeah, I have a, a bit of a problem with uh, first gear shift. Uh, it seems to be something where, it, and it's not real consistent. It happens sometimes, sometimes not, where I will step on the gas, and I'll notice as I'm starting off, it'll go to 2,000, goes to 3,000 RPMs, and then I have to release my foot off the gas, and then it will kind of thud into second gear. And that happens every time? No, not every time. It's not always consistent. Would you say that happens maybe uh, one in a dozen times, or? Well, it's yeah, I would say maybe uh, maybe a third of the time I drive it. Well, on that, I mean, the transmission is completely electrically controlled, so the the computer tells the transmission when and how to shift, what speeds, yeah. you know, whatnot. So it's going to rely on the two major things that it relies on is the throttle position sensor and the vehicle speed sensor. It's going to compare those two and decide what gear you should be in. Now, when you you can you can manipulate the throttle to get it to shift in the next gear. Sometimes I think what's happening is we're not shifting from first gear to second gear. We're actually shifting from first gear to third gear sometimes. So we could, oh. we could be starting to have an issue with second gear. That's one possibility. We could also be having an issue with, you know, a throttle position sensor or a speed sensor. There's a lot of things that play into that. So that would be something where those are good, a di- good description of the symptoms. You know, the frequency is something the shop is going to want to know about. How often does it happen? Uh, but uh, it's going to need to be diagnosed. They're going to need to look at the scanner data. What is that throttle position sensor saying when it when it is doing that? So they're going to have to make it happen. Intermittent issues are always a little tougher, so give the shop a good amount of time with it. So thank you so much for the call. Joel, do you have any thoughts about that? I was just wondering if there was any warning lights on or any temperature consistency to when it was happening. Oh, well, I should have asked that question. That would have been a good question to ask. So, uh, But, yeah, that will be good information for the shop. Thanks so much for the call, James. Looks like we've got another James in Phoenix on a 1997 Cavalier. Go ahead. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hello. How you How doing? You doing today? Good. What can we do for you? Yes, I have uh, brakes problems. Okay. You step on the brake. The back end of the car just sets down really hard. The back brakes grab and set it down really hard. Have you had it looked at by anybody yet? Oh, I've taken it to, I won't say their name, the big brake. Uh, chain did it lifetime guarantee. Sure. Okay. Well, what did they do? Oh, they replaced uh, calipers, drums, uh, pads, everything. Well, it, it sounds like your noise. sounds like your front brakes aren't working from the description you're getting. I'd be wondering about the master cylinder or proportioning valve or ABS part of the system, but that's something that somebody should be able to figure out fairly simple by doing pressure tests and looking at the system and seeing what's going on, but it just sounds to me like maybe your front brakes aren't working. So you're saying it when you hit the brakes, it sounds like the back end's sitting down. We're getting more rear braking than front braking, and you said proportioning valve. So there's a valve from the master cylinder is going to determine how much we send to the front brakes versus the back brakes? Yeah, and a lot of cars nowadays that's built into the master cylinder or through the ABS system, but without seeing that car, I don't know what it has off the top of my head. Right, for sure, for sure. Now, uh, he said calipers. They replace calipers. And when Matt and I were talking about 
uh, calipers and brake jobs. He said, you know, Dave, we do about 800 brake jobs a year at Virginia Auto Service. And in 800 brake jobs, I can say we've replaced calipers on maybe three, four, five if I was really stretching it. It's not very common. So if you're in the, if you're in the shop and you think you just need a basic brake job, of course, if you're at a good shop and you've got a good relationship with them, and if you need a good shop, bumper to bumper radiocom is a good place to find one. But my thing is, unless you have a, you know, the brakes are pulling, you know, when you hit the brakes, uh, or you have a, you know, hydraulic leak at a caliper, caliper replacement isn't that common anymore. Not in Phoenix, especially. I mean, I grew up in the East Coast, and we did a lot more calibers there. Calibers are a lot better now, but we don't deal with rust out here. So that's another factor why calibers where we live are not the biggest failure like they are back east. You know, the other thing to that, um, absolutely, Joel, I mean, oxidation isn't as present here. But one thing to consider, we really make, need to make everybody aware, uh, James out there on that 97 Cavalier, you need to make sure that your suspension is squared away. You can have great brakes all day long, but if you've got blown shocks in the rear of that vehicle and as you apply that brake, that brake wants to stop the rolling motion. And if we don't have any dampening or cushioning from an operating suspension, that's going to cause things to dip, bounce, jounce, and so on. So uh, maybe have someone take a look at that suspension as well. That's a good point. Uh, James, thank you for, so much for the call. We've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. Some of the other buzzwords that you're going to hear as a consumer, things like brake rotors, brake pads are one of them, calipers we just talked about. So calipers are what squeeze the brake pad up against the rotor. Uh, machining in the rotors. Now, there's different ways to machine rotors. There's on-car brake lathes. Do you guys use an on-car brake lathe at Arizona Imports? I have an on-car lathe. I have an old-school off-car lathe. We also cut drums. Drum brakes are still around, believe it or not. A lot of cars still have drum brakes with wheel cylinders and shoes. But we have a machine that touches the rotors right on the car. With that machine, it measures the wheel bearing play. It takes it all into consideration. The main job there is to stop shimmies and vibrations from breaking. And, you know, i got to tell you, um, what we see a lot of in the shop, uh, not to discredit the auto parts houses around town, a lot of these new vehicles, you have to turn the rotor while it is on the vehicle. Uh, that's very important. Technology is moving that way. And so if you're walking in to buy brake pads and you've got your local parts house, they're getting ready to spin those rotors, be aware that the specification for some of these vehicles required on the car brake lathe. Well, then we were talking about a brake job, and you, you said, Joel, maybe a brake job, average brake job, $225. Um, you know, I, I was going to throw out, in my mind, average brake job somewhere between 250 and 350 You know, if you're driving a BMW, you know, it could be 350 400 you know, or, you know, if... And it goes back to the brake job word, because what is a brake job? I mean, is it putting in just pads? I get customers all the time say, so I can do my own brakes. I don't like brake job. Doctors don't say I'm doing a heart job, <laughs> right? What we're doing is we're working on systems, you know, and, and so um, as a consumer, listen, call in, find out uh, what it's going to cost to take a look and give symptoms, including brake squeaks and so on. Symptoms, symptoms, symptoms. That's what we want. Symptoms and, you know, just because someone wants to sell you a brake fluid flush doesn't mean they're trying to cheat you. It is something that is recommended, uh, you know, every two to three years. It is not a bad idea because brake fluid is what do they call it, hydroscopic height? I can't even yeah, say the word. And, but And ABS pumps cost thousands of dollars nowadays. Right. And since you started, Joel, you told me, since you started doing uh, brake fluid services, you see a lot less components replaced. Yeah. So when we come back, open lines, we've got Judy at 602-277-5827. You are listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and Matt Allen is out this weekend, so I brought in Joel Bartko from Arizona Import Specialists and Frank Loitz from Desert Car Care Centers in the East Valley. And I realize both these guys are from New York. They're from the same neighborhood. They, did you guys date the same girl in high school? <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it, right? <laughs> So, Frank, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your shop out there, your shops, actually, out there in the East Valley and the neighborhoods that you serve. Absolutely, and it's my pleasure to be on, Joel. Uh, Dave, thanks for having us on. Desert Car Care Service Centers, you know, we've got a, a group of stores. We have three locations, McQueen in Guadalupe, Williamsfield Val Vista, and Chandler and Dobson. And, uh, you know, we run a culture of an automotive service experience, and we pride ourselves on that experience, and 
Quite frankly, we have a lot of fun at the same time. So uh, having good fun fixing cars and building relationships one step at a time. Well, I appreciate you coming out today for sure. So we are going to go with Judy in Goodyear. It looks like on a 2000 Toyota Echo. Go ahead, Judy. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. What can Um, we do for you? (laughs) I have a question. I think it might be the fan belt, but I'm not sure. Um, I've had the car for, I don't know, like six years or so. And every time I take it to the mechanic, because it, it squeaks and squeals so loud, Every time I take it, they always say, oh, it's because the fan belt gets wet and it squeals or it's just part of the car. So it just doesn't sit well with me because it is really loud and it's, it's pretty constant. It's like every time we run the car and is it more, know, throughout the trip. Is it more in the morning or as a car warms up, does it go away? <laughs> no. Like yesterday, last night, um, we were dri- I was driving it to go drop off something. And as soon as I started it, it you know, it was squealing and then... Um, you know, I was driving about, you know, five or ten minutes, and then it would start doing it again, and it's every time. Have you, have you changed the belt yet? Yeah, I've tried changing the belt. Um, we used to change them, like, every year, because the mechanic would say, oh, the belts need to get changed. Okay, well, how about the pulleys that the belts ride on? Um, I don't think they tried doing that. Do you think that's what it is? Well, without hearing it or seeing it, there's a belt mm-hmm. system, and you're usually going to have on that system, you're going to have the belt itself, the pulleys, and a tensioner. You might have a bad tensioner, you might have a bad pulley, but if, you shouldn't need a belt every year. She hit on something that just drives me crazy about auto repair is that she's talking to her mechanic, I have a problem, and he says, oh, don't worry about it. And, and I've, I've, I've heard people give that advice in our business. Trust me, the car was not designed to squeak like that. It just wasn't. You know, there is something wrong, and, and, and it's telling you there's a problem, so don't ignore it. Let's at least identify if, if once we identify the problem, then we can decide we don't want to do something about it, but let's identify it first. And Judy, listen, you drive a 2000 Echo. It's not supposed to echo or make noise or any of that. Now, listen, I want to add to what Joel was saying. I want you, first off, um, go to the bumper to bumper radio.com website, select a shop in your neighborhood. What they're going to do is they're going to look exactly at those pulley systems, and I will throw out there that AC system. If you're engaging that AC system and you've got an AC clutch that may be on its way out, that could randomly make that squeak as well. So please, no echoes from the Echo. That car is a great car. <laughs> Take it to some who knows what they're doing that's reputable. Frank is a personality boy in this network, and uh, he showed up this morning with grapes. I'm not really sure what they're all about. I don't think you can make wine with them. The grapes, the head of the grape is literally the size of the eraser on my pencil. So (laughs) what's up with the grapes? I tell you, my passion is gardening and music and a bunch of things, but I love coming on here and sharing what I've got growing in the cooking in the garden, baby. (laughs) Uh, And so this is my first year popping grapes, and uh, I figured if any one of us have some sugar levels dropping, we pop some grapes. Pop some grapes. Well, last year was last year was eggplants, and we we made some eggplant parm, and it was fantastic. So, appreciate that. Thanks so much for the call, Judy. We are going to go with Karen on a 2001 PT Cruiser. Go ahead, Karen. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, there was nothing wrong with my car except when I was at an intersection and I was running the air conditioning. My car would jump. And I was told, oh, you need to get uh, replace the spark plugs. So I thought, you know, I need, need it's time for a tune-up, get my free oil lube that I bought when I purchased the car, Lifetime Oil and Lube. Mm-hmm. I go to the dealership. I make the appointment to get the tune-up, get my oil changed. I leave. Oh, and I say, will you check everything to make sure my car is running really good, you know, the oil, or tire pressure, the brakes. Oh, yeah, we'll check everything. I get my car, $200. Oh, they told me that I needed uh, new wires on my um, spark plugs because they were arcing. And that was an additional $80. I said, okay, sounds like I should um, replace that. Almost $200. I get my car. I drive, and it's great. My car's running wonderful. I'm at an intersection, no jumping. I'm so thrilled. Uh, I drive my car to work. This is Thursday. I get my car. Friday, I go to work, uh, go out Friday night, park my car in the garage. Don't drive it again until Monday. As I'm driving my car, the oil light goes on. 
then I'm thinking, why would the oil light go on? I just had it replaced at the dealership. The, the, the oil. Did, uh, did the car drive funny or just the light came on? Just the light came on. How many miles, Judy, just give us, or uh, I'm sorry, Ken, a quick picture of the car. Is it 100,000 miles, 80,000 yes, miles? Yes, over 100,000. Over 100,000 miles on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's a lot of reasons that those oil lights can go on. It may be related to something they did with the oil change. It may not be related to something they did with the oil change. So you went in there for an oil change. You got to tune up with some plugs and some spark plug wires. Everything worked great. Uh, if it was if it was out of oil or there was an issue like that, it could be clattering. What's the first thing that comes to your mind, Joel, when oil light goes off? Well, is it the red oil light? I don't know. She's not with us. Okay. Well, I'd be worried about oil pressure. Uh huh. Is it low on oil? Is there enough oil in it? Is the engine sludged up a little? Is right. Is it still running good? Sure. So there's some some things that need to be checked out, and it needs to get in right away. I wouldn't ignore it. You know, I wouldn't say, well, hey, we're just going to ignore that oil light because when the light oil lights are red, and when a light is red. Don't never, ignore never ignore the red lights, no matter what. The yellow light will let you ignore it for a couple days. But, but it's telling the, you got to do something sooner you or later. Do something. So if you had a good experience there, by all means, you go back. Uh, they may want to recheck the work that they did to make sure something wasn't knock loose or bump loose or something's not wrong. So I would obviously give them the opportunity to do that. That would be the right thing to do. Uh, go there first. Frank, go ahead. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind technically on uh, regarding oil and oil filters uh, and you had mentioned uh, free. I, you know, I, I shake in my boots when I hear free. That usually equals up, oh, didn't get the right weight of oil or a really inexpensive filter. Now, I'm not suggesting that happens all the time, but listen up. Oil weight is key. Okay, and if we put this, especially with the Europeans, Joel will tell you, if you get some sort of loss leader discounted coupon, I'm free coming your way, look out. Free equals a potential problem. So check way to oil. Make sure the oil filters the proper, uh, proper specification for that vehicle as well. Well, I th- she, she brought something up that, that comes to mind, I think, with a lot of customers. They get a repair done on their car, and some of these cars that are getting repairs have 100,000 miles on it. Everything works great. They're happy with the service. And a week later... It could be two days later. Something else comes up, and they go, oh, my goodness, what did they do wrong? That's the first thing that comes to mind, and we see it every day in our shop. So we do a major repair, and you know, now something else is making noise. There's, there's kind of an age to a car, let's just say at 100,000 miles, where a couple things are going to break and need, I, <laughs> need repair and maintenance. And it may not be related to anything they did, you know, uh, but certainly go, go back and talk to them. You know, but it could be something totally different. Absolutely. It, it could be as simple as somebody changing oil and touching the connector on the oil pressure switch and just jarred it loose a little bit. I think the bigger message, guys, listen, you're driving and you've got an 80 to 100K, 100,000 mile plus. You are the 70-year-old walking around. You need to visit the doctor <laughs> two or three times a year. If you're going to keep your car, I call it take the 100,000 do or die. Take those grapes away from him, Joel. 100K <laughs> do or die. Get the vehicle checked out and, you know, prepare for some things. But in this case here, you know, Karen on that PT Cruiser, take it back. Politely request that they recheck everything. Or better yet, visit bumper to bumperradiocom Visit those shops out there. These guys are all working very hard to do the right thing. For sure. Well, we appreciate the call. We're going to go to Lorna in Mesa. She's got a 2008 Honda van. Go ahead, Lorna. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question about uh, alignment, tire alignment. I'm looking at a printout of a comprehensive alignment check, and it's telling me the front is okay, but the back is giving me some percentages is off just a 0.3 and then a minus 1.3. How bad is that, and is that something I need to take care of right now? Well, on your rear suspension there, that sheet's telling you that the alignment is not out exactly. Could be your camber, could be your caster. Without seeing the sheet, I don't know. But you'd like to see all those numbers in the proper line. It would affect tire wear. Depending on how far out, it could be dramatic or not dramatic. It could could affect stability if it was really far out. So you would like to have those numbers in line Without seeing them, it's hard to tell exactly which one is out right now. In Lord, there's usually a specification written right there. So you can see if it's just off a touch or it's, you know, is it right in the window or is it way out in left field? You know what I tell folks, uh, and absolutely, there are uh, once a year, okay, between twelve to 15,000 miles, get it aligned. Listen, you wear a pair of sneakers, right? And if you've got an ankle issue <laughs> with your ankle, you're going to wear your sneakers 
improperly on one side. Same principle with your vehicle and the rubber tires. Now, Lorna, more than likely, they've got a toe setting in the rear of that that needs to be adjusted. That's a very common setting to go out of whack. You know, you're going to drive over rough roads and bumpy surfaces. So uh, should not be a big to-do cost-wise. But remember, once a year, get your vehicle aligned. 08 Honda van. Uh, I couldn't imagine it's too far out of whack unless uh, Lorna hits every curb she sees. You know, there's some people that, that do that. You know, uh, I'm not one of those. Okay, I hit a lot of curbs. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for the call. I mentioned the beginning of the show uh, travel, you know, travel, uh, summer travel. And people always bring their car in the day before it's time to go out of town. And they're there for an oil change. And the last thing we want to do is look at a car day before an oil change and say, oh, your car's great. Good luck driving in New York. I'll pick New York since that's where you guys are from. But uh, what do you do when you, when you see that, Joel? I shake when somebody tells me that because just the other day, a person walks in. I want that timing belt water pump you recommended last year. I said, okay, I'm leaving for San Diego right as soon as I leave here. I'm like, no, go rent a car because <laughs> anything that can go wrong will, and why open ourselves, you and us, up to that problem? Hey, guess what? I'm going to go to my doctor. Hey, doc, I'm running the 25K tomorrow. Can you check me out? Make sure I'm good. We <laughs> need to... Everything goes medical with Frank. Knee bone, hip bone, tires, sneakers. <laughs> plan and prepare. Plan that schedule. It's so important with your vehicle. Plan and prepare. Take well, some anxiety out. One of the most common things I see is people are just jumping over to San Diego. It's, it's a three-day trip over the weekend. And if you, you fell behind and you didn't get the car, I would like to see the car get in two weeks before you plan on going out of town. So... Uh, Two weeks is what you need to do that. But if you didn't, you know, it is worth renting a car. Yeah, or yeah. if you got to go, get the oil change. At least that's something that nobody's afraid to do before you leave, and they could maybe see something that's going to happen and tell you don't take this car or, hey, it looks good to go. And if you're planning on going through a drive through quick lube with high school kids working on that oil change before you go on that long road trip throughout the summer desert, <laughs> rethink that, please. Please. <laughs> well, when we come back, we've got... Jim, Dan, and Jose, you are listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and Matt Allen is out this weekend. So we've got Joel Bartko with Arizona Import Specialist with us from Tempe. We've got Frank Loitz from Desert Car Care Service Centers out in the East Valley here to help me help you with your car and we've got the Scottsdale International Auto Museum is hosting a benefit car show starting at 5 o'clock today. It's for the two first responders who lost their lives about a month ago. All the proceeds will totally go 100% to the family. It's at Metro Center Mall from 5 to 9. It sounds like they're going to have some vintage police cars and fire trucks. If you can get out there and support these families, it is appreciated. So anyway, up for this segment, we're going to go with it looks like Jose and Chandler on a 2004 Toyota 4Runner. Go ahead, Jose. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, say that I, I do take my vehicles to Desert Park Care Centers, and they've always treated me right. Jose, mucho gracias. You know what? Thank you, my friend. Thank you. We are grateful. Thank you. What can we do for and you, so, Jose? Just a quick question on my on my Toyota 4Runner. It's got a little bit over 100,000 miles, and... Uh, um, we, I started using a uh, full synthetic uh, here, probably the last 10,000 miles. And according to the manufacturer, I'm supposed to change the oil every 5,000 miles. Now, because I'm using full synthetic, is it okay to extend that, you know, to save a little cash, you know, maybe extend it 10,000 miles? I don't know. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. That is a fantastic question and really a frequently asked question on the show. So what do you guys think? In my opinion, I use full synthetic in all my vehicles and recommend it to my customers, and I always tell them change it every five to 6,000 miles or six months, whatever comes first. The oil manufacturers say you're good for 10, 12,000, but I personally, in our heat level where we live, prefer to do it about every 6,000. You know, what we're talking about, too, uh, Jose, you've got to remember now your, your intervals as it is required under severe duty, right? We live in a climate that's severe duty. The second thing, remember, when you're getting an oil change, that's the time to inspect the vehicle. So 
you're going to see a lot of synthetics. There's a lot of technology behind this uh, moving forward, all these new blends that are coming out. I mean, GM, from what I understand, is working on a 100,000-mile oil. And the idea behind an oil chain, guys... And gals out there, remember, that's the time. You know, it's a yearly visit with the doctor. Do I have a nail in my tire? So you want to you wanna get that looked at at least once a year, twice a year, uh, and so on. So- well, my, my opinion on it is if you're going to go to synthetic oil, that's what I run in my car, and I change my oil every 5,000 miles. It offers better protection for the engine. Now, there is people who say, hey, I can use synthetic, and I can stretch out the oil changes, and I can save some coin. And you can, you know. But also the filter. You know, the filter is getting plugged up. It's it's picking up microns as time goes on and, and re, becoming restrictive. So I'm still a, a believer of the 5,000-mile oil change, even with synthetic, but I, I know my engine is going to be good and sound for years. The one thing I want to add is how often do you check your oil? Because people are going 5,000. I work on BMWs every day where they recommend 15,000, and they come in every day with no oil in them because all cars use oil, and you need to check your oil. Nobody checks their oil nowadays. Well, we're going to go with Dan in Peoria on a 2001 Lexus. Go ahead, Dan. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Okay, we'll come back to Dan. It looks like, oh, there we go. Dan in Peoria on Owen Lexus. Go ahead, Dan. Hi, my question is about uh, alternative fuels, natural gas or propane. You know, mileage, is it better or worse? Performance, is it the, you know, does it still have the same pickup, all that kind of stuff? And maintenance, is it all the same? You know, do you change your spark plugs and oil at the same intervals? And after that, do you guys recommend it? And if you do, where to go? What are you specifically referring to on your Lexus? You want to go to an alternative fuel? Well, I was thinking about it, yeah. Uh, You know, converting over to either the natural gas, the compressed natural gas or the propane. I don't, you know, I don't don't know that... uh... What do you What do you guys think? I I don't know that it's there the savings and the and the reason for doing it. And we're 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 turning the corner here on some new technologies. I think, you know, three to five years from now, it's going to be a whole different playing field. Yeah, I think uh, Dan on that two thousand one Lexus, I'd be very cautious. Uh, you also need to ask yourself as a consumer, what's my goal? You know, and and all of us, we want you know we want better gas mileage. You know, we want less car maintenance, uh, and so on. But I believe on a 2001 Lexus, you're probably going to entertain uh, the yellow brick road to disaster. So um, <laughs> now, in regards to technology, and I, and I got I to, gotta, guys, I got to tell you that uh, Nathan over at Good Works Auto, I'm going to plug our buddies up there off the uh, uh, 101 corridor. They're doing hybrid service now. And, um, you know, they're, they're looking at these alternative technologies. So if your goal is to increase gas mileage you want to be a bit more worry-free about, um, you know, spending more money on gas. There is good technology out there, but be careful on an 01 Lexus. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I would be going there in particular. I I've think. never seen those conversions turn out that great, in my personal opinion. I think if you really want to go that way, then go to hybrid or something like that. But really justify, like Frank said, is it worth it to you and what you're gaining? Well, we're going to sneak in Mike in Gilbert on a 2004 Honda Pilot. Go ahead, Mike. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, I have a 04 Pilot that is starting to uh, register hot when we are idling. So is that like the cooling pan going out? What would that be most likely? Just when you're sitting at a stoplight, when you're cruising down the road? How's it? Yeah, going? like I'm sitting at a drive through or something. It instantly, like within a minute, starts registering hot. How does the air condition feel at that same time? It starts to get hot. It, it starts, starts to get hot, hot as well. Yeah, I think you're 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 in the right direction. It's going to be a cooling fan. When the car is rolling down the road, it doesn't need to rely on fans to cool the condenser, which is for the air condition, or the radiator, which is for the engine. But, uh, Joel, what are some of the things that control that cooling fan? I mean, yeah, cooling I was fan say, is the obvious. It sounds but... like the fan may not be working, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the fan. You could have a relay, a temperature sensor. Someone needs to look at that and now because overheating in the desert here is our number one enemy on a car. All right, Mike, I'm not suggesting that you get out through the uh, Sonic drive through and have the kids come out there with little portable <laughs> fans. Uh, but what I will say, the bigger statement, okay, please don't drive it. If it's getting to H, yes. we don't want to elevate this thing into a head gasket. That no, can cost a whole lot no. more. And that's exactly what we were talking about last week is just don't overheat these cars because it goes from a, a simple repair. You can have a temperature sensor be causing your cooling fan for the engine not to be working. In literally, I mean, you're talking about like an $80 repair. 
and we don't fix it. Now we're talking about a two thousand dollar repair on a on a V six on a pilot. It could get a lot more than that because now you're talking two heads. You got to fix. Fudgel <laughs> throws up five thousand dollars. I mean, it could get very expensive. So we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, if you've got brake issues, go in with symptoms. Don't tell them what you need. Uh, Joel was just saying he had a car in his shop where the guy had a price on a brake system and everything, and Joel was going to do the brake job for him, and they checked the brakes out. They were perfect. And then the guy says, oh, yeah, but it pulsates. Well, that's totally different than brake pads being worn out. So anyway, if you guys are looking for a great shop, BumperToBumperRadio.com, the best thing you can get going is a relationship with a good shop. Then it's not 